Welcome everybody. My name is Mina Jane and I'm the director of the Ashland Public Library. Really thrilled to be here with Sarah Robertson Barnes, who if you've been with us before with her, gave us some amazing practical tips on um, being less wasteful and more sustainable a few months ago. So I'm really happy to be back with her again. And um, before I, we go into our talk today, I wanted to say a couple of things. One is I'd like to thank the friends of the Ashland Public Library who support all of our programming, as well as the almost 40 libraries that partnered with us on this program. And as I said, uh, we had to change the date, so we're not really sure like if that will work for people, but we are recording, so we'll be sending this out to everybody afterwards so everybody can get the tips. Um, and I, like I said, we had Sarah here a few months ago and it was wonderful. And today she's talking about zero waste with kids in terms of uh, making lunches and having birthday parties, which we all know can be huge waste, <laughs> huge pile of the waste. And she's gonna help us make sure that we don't do that. So welcome, Sarah. Thanks so much for being here with us again. Hi. Thanks for having me back. I'm excited to talk about these two specific things um, that I think can give folks a lot of pause on how we can do better. So I have some solutions for you tonight. Okay, so let's get started. All right, um, let me get this out of the way. All right, so tonight I'm gonna give you some practical tips on how to go zero waste with kids. And as Nina said, we're we're going to focus on um, what to pack in the lunch bag and what to do about birthday parties. Uh, this is my little niece here, our last climb at March. Oh. Okay, so this is me. I am just your average soccer mom uh, trying to do the sustainability thing uh, here in the suburbs of Toronto, where we may have access to less zero waste infrastructure. So things like refill stores, um, and it's more like big box cars everywhere, all that kind of stuff. So what are some things that we can do according to our circumstances um, to be a little more eco-friendly? Okay. Uh, just a little bit of background on us if you weren't at the last talk. Um, this is uh, me and my two uh, little guys at the uh, Francina Gorge in, I think it's in New Hampshire. Um, but our eco family journey has been really slow and steady, but, but progressing over the last 10 years or so. Um, so we are a plant based family. Um, I started reducing my plastic use when we were going through infertility, and I just sort of fell down the Google rabbit hole of what could be causing that and that's how I found a book called Happy Life and here we are. Um, I went zero waste seven years ago uh, when I found the hashtag on Instagram and realized there were other people uh, like me um, but I am here to tell you that zero waste doesn't mean zero waste. Um, it's very difficult to eliminate waste but we can take steps to reduce it as our, our gateway into sustainable living. Okay. So let's start with a win. These are things you're probably already doing. Um, they're they're everywhere now. They're kind of socially acceptable. It's the things that we're all doing. Um, and these are great first steps. So if you're already doing this, you're doing amazing. You're doing so much more than you think. Um, the first one is bringing your own bag. At this point, I think we all have a, maybe too many reusable bags, uh, but that's a good thing. So keep them everywhere. Keep them in your car, keep them at your desk, keep them by your front door. Uh, and then that way you won't forget it. Uh, these seem to be ubiquitous now, the reusable water bottle. My better day has been almost backed over by the corner. Um, and then the last one, of course, is depending on where you live, um, you're probably recycling in your municipal program. And if you're like me, you also have a green bin program where your um, composting is picked up by the municipality. And then I also have a backyard bin and I have an indoor worm bin, uh, which we can talk about another time. Okay, so earlier I said, well, zero waste is not actually zero. So what does it actually mean? Um, it is an industrial term that does come from reusing everything and creating zero waste. But in terms of what it actually means in your daily life, it's shifting our mindset away from disposability and convenience um, and shifting to what we already have, reusing what's, what already exists. So the example that I like to give is the plastic spoon. Uh, we sort of expect these things to be available to us everywhere we go, when in reality, just like putting it in your purse, 
and washing it when you get home has far less effort when you're a member, of course. Um, so it is a habit that we that we want to build, but it is easier. We're all familiar with the three R's from the Mobius loop, and I'm just going to add one to either end. And these come from Bea Johnson's Zero Waste Home, and it's the five R's instead of the three R's. Uh, number one, the most important one, is to refuse. Refuse things that we do not need. Um, and that's a daily practice. Do I actually need this? Do I already have something else that will do the job? Um, is it just something I feel like I have to buy? Is it what everybody else is doing? Having those sort of conversations with yourself and your family on what you can shift and what's non-negotiable. There's going to be things that just don't work for you and your family, and that's totally fine. Let me just work on something else. Okay, so now let's talk about some, some practical tips. Um, how can we extend the zero waste mindset? So shift simplicity and reusing uh, into raising eco-conscious children. Um, so it's it's great to do the eco-friendly things, but what's more important is talking to our kids about why we're doing them. Um, at this point, I have two tweens, uh, and so I'm getting a lot of eye rolling like, ugh, we know, mom. Um, but they have that foundational scaffolding uh, of how they were taught to shop, how they were taught to pack lunches, how we do certain things and why. And if the worst they do is rebel with single-use plastic, I know they'll come back. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, how can we involve them in being meaningful involved in reducing our, our footprint, whether it's through things that they use, things we do as a family, or things we do in a community. But ultimately, um, our job as parents is to uh, equip our kids with the skills that they're going to need to go out into the world and understanding that, that everyone does things differently, and that's okay. So it's starts. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna talk about, especially with school going back on Tuesday, thank goodness, I'm ready, um, is how to pack a litterless lunch. Um, it might also be referred to as a zero waste lunch. I think some school boards refer to it as a boomerang lunch. Um, and I'll explain a little bit what that means in the more, in a minute. Um, our school board has a boomerang lunch policy. And what that means is everything that gets sent to the school in the lunch bag returns home in the lunch bag. Um, and the reasons for that are twofold. There is no composting program at the school. And so the food ends up in the garbage, um, which not only smells, but um, nothing breaks down in a landfill, not even food. And our school is eco school certified. So they want to send that home because we have the green bin program. And the other reason is so you can see what your kids are actually eating. Um, I know that kids really don't have a, a lot of time for lunch. So it kind of helps you gauge how much are they actually eating? What are they eating? And so on to make sure that they're getting as much nutrition as they can during the day. So I'm gonna go through my four point plan on how we're gonna pack a litterless lunch or as close to as possible. And the first one is making a plan because I, I still, my kid's going into grade seven, I'm still making lunches in the morning, um, but I do have some semblance of a plan. So at least I know what's going into the box. Um, the second is to involve the kids. Any age can help do something, whether they're just little guys in kindergarten or they're, like I said, I've got some tweens and they're going to be doing their own lunches this year. So they'll do little baby steps towards that. I have found over the years in terms of getting them to actually eat is that snacks are key, even if it just means cutting these into smaller pieces so they look like snacks. Um, we're gonna minimize food waste that way by getting them to actually eat them. And then packing the lunch bag. This is the big one for me. What reusables do you actually need? And which ones can you skip? I'm starting to see a lot more eco advertising. Um, and it's really important to remember that we can't buy our way to sustainability. A few good reusables will take you through the whole um, school portion of your child's life. We're on year nine of school and still using the same containers. Haven't lost one yet. Knock on one. All right, here we go. So I already kind of went over this, but what is a litterless lunch? So the goal is to reduce single use items. So like little prepackaged snacks to use reusable containers instead of disposable and sending home the food scraps to be composted if you have it. Okay, so making a weekly plan and involve your kids in it. 
I don't love grocery shopping with my kids, but they come with me um, partially so that they can learn how to do it for themselves and they can learn, um, you know, how to put things in your own bags, how to use your produce bags, how much of this do we need, how much of that we need, uh, what's available, what does it cost, all of those kinds of things. Before we go, um, we do make a plan of what they are willing to eat this week. If they're a parent, you know that changes. Um, so we tend to make a list of sandwiches, snacks, what fruits and veggies are acceptable currently. And then of course, what leftovers are they willing to take the next day? So one of mine will always take a hot lunch and the other one won't. Um, so we sort of go through with, okay, well, if I make chili, will you take chili to school the next day? Yes, things like that. So we're planning dinners and lunch at the same time. Um, let them help. I know that that can be really frustrating. I don't love baking with my kids, but they're now at the point where they're asking to do it themselves. So um, they can do, they can chop the veggies. They can help you with baking. Um, this is a picture of my two little guys putting the snacks that they've chosen into um, their own containers uh, at our ball barn. Um, they can help with washing your lunch containers. If it involves them in the process at any point is going to not only help you, um, but help them understand what's evolved. And I find that when kids help to prepare the food, they will be more likely to actually eat it. Um, and then of course, when you're working together in the kitchen, you do end up chatting about this and that, chatting about your day, uh, whatever it is, you're spending a little bit more time together, which may not always be possible with sports schedules and our work calls and, and all of that. So taking that maybe be 10 minutes can be really valuable. Okay. So as I said, snacks are key. Um, normally I'll pack, I know this sounds like a lot, but like four or five snacks. I like to reach different things and then throw them together in a little melange like this. I've got some dried dates, some edamame, some oranges, some pretzels. And these are just some bars. Nothing. And then they're really easy to freeze instead of cutting them and all that stuff. Um, again, just some stuff all thrown together. Um, if your school is nut free, just omit the nuts. Um, but having sort of handfuls of things to just throw together um, makes a nice customizable mix for for each kid. Um, I do I do say bulk is is often cheaper. Not always depends on where you live and and what you have access to. Um, but please know that if you don't have access to a bulk store, that's totally fine. Um, sometimes buying the biggest container of the thing is also bulk. So for example, we can get big one liter, uh, I think it might actually be two liters, it doesn't matter, um, a big container of yogurt. And then I will dish it out into the smaller containers and send that to school. And then the way I've only got one container that's more likely to be recycled than a bunch of smaller containers. Of course, larger containers are more suitable for reuse, and those yogurt containers end up housing my tomato seedlings in the spring. Um, so yeah, just if you don't have access to bulk, look for the biggest package of the thing, uh, whether it's applesauce or yogurt or what have you, um, in packaging that's uh, likely to be recycled. And of course, fruits and veggies are always good. Okay. The reusables you need and the ones you don't. So I have and have been sent pretty much every container possible um, and given lots away because we already have what we need, but I'm gonna show you some of my favorites. Um, so this one here is uh, one of my little guys and it's a nesting container. So there's three different, um, if you can see three different containers in here and then it all clicks together. Um, I also really like this one. This is from Lunchbox. It's another uh, section container for different options and they can sort of pick around at it versus just sort of your sandwich container. So I really like a divided container of any kind. And if it's plastic, that's totally fine. Um, but definitely a divided container is key. Just put a little sticker with your last name on it. And I still have yet to lose a container. Um, I also like these little round ones, they're, they're nesting. There's three of them in here. Um, and again, those are great for yogurt or putting in the muffin or things like that. 
Um, so those on find their way into the lunchbox. These are from YouConserve, and YouConserve guarantees all of their lids um, are made of silicone. And if you break one, which this just the bullet after about nine years, they'll send you a new lid. So we love to see it. And the last one um, container that I really love is these YouConserve um, thermos style containers. I think it's an insulated container. Just microwave some leftovers the next day and pop them in here. And that's an easy one. Um, obviously a reusable water bottle. I think most kids have those these days. The cloth napkin, if you have one, I just sort of tie it in there. The thermos, the lunch bag. The ones you don't need. Oh, snack bags. I forgot to add this. So these are little snack pouches. They're different sizes. Here tonight, I have my large sandwich one. Um, and so they're cotton, they have a zipper, and on the inside is a food grade waterproof layer. Um, and then you can just toss these in the washing machine and hang them to dry. Uh, so when I was chatting with Nina just before uh, this, she was asking about taking her sandwich to work. And I, I recommend uh, this for sure. Things you don't need. Um, if you already have it, great. If you like it, cool. Um, I've had these and the ones in the picture for like five or six years and we've never used them. Um, instead, I just take a fork knife or a fork and a spoon out of our cutlery drawer, throw it in the lunch bag and it always comes home. So again, I've yet to, to lose a piece of cutlery, which is astonishing, but <laughs> um, also the forks just kind of suck. Like you can't stab anything with it. So these you probably don't need. I wouldn't spend your money on these. Um, of course, if your child uses a straw frequently, then sure. But if you don't actually use them, uh, there's really no point in purchasing them or they're just going to sit in your drawer. So really think about how you're going to be using the container. Um, we are really aggressively marketed things uh, to be eco-friendly, but you really only need a few things. If it comes down to it, it's the divided container and the thermos. Uh, where to get these. So they're all over Amazon, um, which is totally fine. I don't personally use Amazon, um, but we're all super busy. Like it is what it is. So that, that's fine. But shop your you have that will work. Um, like I said, if it's like plastic Tupperware, like that's totally fine. It's reusable. It's perfect. Um, check the thrift store. Uh, if you're, again, like me, I, I have too many containers now. And so I give them away in our local buy nothing group. Um, when a, if a company sends me something and I, oh, I didn't expect this, so I'll put it in my Facebook group and I'm happy to give that away to somebody. And I've also seen those really great um, Planet Lunch bento style ones on Facebook Marketplace for like five bucks. So especially this week, it's just flying around Facebook. So check those out. And then of course, if you have any local stores that sell eco things, definitely check them out. Okay. This will be the controversial section of the talk. Um, I am not a huge fan of uh, other kids' birthday parties. Um, we live, there's a lot of um, sort of over the top um celebrations that are pretty wasteful and that's fine if that's um, important to you but if you're here you're probably looking for a way to simplify that and it's a way that you can lead by example uh so um i'll give you some tips on having a zero waste birthday party for yourself as well as some tips on going to other kids birthday parties and um, so i'll go with three main categories um, and then we're going to send out an article to you uh, after this as well that has some more, more detailed suggestions. But I'm going to talk about how to keep it simple, how to keep it reusable, and how to keep it out of the landfill. This is my very sad cake, but tasted great. Okay. Where to have it? Have it at home if you can. Um, this is a smaller party and um, our rule uh, is they can invite as many kids as they are turning old um, and then by the time they got up to 10 11 12 they weren't really into birthday parties anymore but it worked really well when they were younger um, it is easier to clean up 
everything goes uh, either in the compost or the dishwasher instead of the, the garbage can. And it helps you really keep costs low. Um, some of the parties we've been to around here like blow my mind with how much it must have cost. And um, in this economy, uh, I think we're all looking to save um, a little bit of money where we can. This is one way to do it. Um, for food, uh, if you are a baker, try a homemade cake. Even a cake mix is totally fine. In fact, um, this jar here is cake mix from my bulk store. This, these are just stand-in cake ingredients. Um, if you can. So bulk mix, we come to the, to the thrift, or excuse me, to the bulk store. They pick out a couple of snacks like cheesies or popcorn or chips, whatever it is. And then we'll do like grapes and carrots and, you know, a uh, standard sort of veggie thing. Uh, we kind of throw a pizza at them and they all either have like water or milk um, or juice in our own glasses. I serve it on my own plates uh, with my own cutlery and my own cloth napkins. Never broken a dish. Everything goes into the dishwasher and you're done. Okay. Oh, I just wanted to say one more thing about having it at home. Um, so one of the questions I've gotten in the past is like, well, what about activities? Because they're not at laser tag or the trampoline park or the play place or whatever it is. So some of the activities that we've done is um, like a, they all build a big Lego set together. So there's tons of secondhand Lego out there. One year they built a snow fort in our front yard. Uh, one year they did on our basement screaming, which was a crowd pleaser. Um, and one year they just played Super Mario and everyone was happy. So as long as the kids are happy, I'm happy. Okay. And this picture's not loading. Let me see if I can remember what it was. Oh, okay. I remember. Um, so for decorations, keep it simple. Um, you don't need to go out and get like the Batman plates and the Batman cups and all of those kinds of things. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, getting the one thing if your kid likes Batman. Um, or you can, again, ask on um, your buy nothing group. Hey, I'm, I'm looking for this. Does anybody have extras? And I see this happen all the time in our buy nothing group. They always come through. It's, it's a really great community if you're not in yours yet. Uh, years and years ago, though, I purchased, oh, this was, what was the picture? I purchased this happy birthday banner um, from, on Etsy that's no longer there. But um, I just purchased this banner when my oldest turned one, and he's turning 13. And we now use it for every family birthday. So this is our traditional uh, family birthday banner that gets hung up in the kitchen for everyone's birthday now. So it's it's really special to our family. Um, gifts from others is always sticky. And I'm really happy to talk about this in the Q&A if you like. Um, there's not a lot you can do here, especially if you don't know the other kids' parents. Um, you can sort of gently communicate your wishes, but ultimately you kind of can't really control that. So give some grace there. Um, what you can do is when you give gifts, give them according to your values. So for example, um, gift experiences, um, like we love movie gift cards. We just used one the other day. Um, I've also given uh, kids plants, a uh, plant for their room, um, a book on a book that they like. Um, our little neighbor is obsessed with bird watching, as am I. So I got them a bird watching book. Um, an eco-friendly essential, of, uh, eco essential such as uh, the containers or whatever it is uh, wrapped up in in a piece of cloth here. And even the cloth can be the present, whether it's a bandana or play silks or something like that. But that's how another way you can lead by example. Uh, when we talk about gifts from others in the Q&A, I have a couple more tips, especially for grandparents. Okay. And um, so this is my, this is my controversial opinion. I hate goodie bags. Not for me, um, the plastic bags filled with plastic stuff from the dollar store. I totally understand the impulse or the, the reasoning behind it is to say, thanks for coming to my my party, but the toys always break in five seconds. And then it's just, it's all garbage by the time we get home. So when we're doing parties, I started to think, how can we do this differently? 
and I came up with a bunch of ideas and my oldest was like, mom, no. So I said, well, what's your favorite part of a goodie bag? And he said, candy. Perfect. So we went to the bulk store and I let them choose a few different kinds of candy, which they have here. And then we gave them away in little jam jars. And we've also done that in little paper bags as well. And those go over great. The parents are happy um, and the kids are thrilled because they're they're getting a jar of candy and and the parents, thank you, this is great. So I've only ever had positive uh, responses to what we do as goodie bags. Um, you can also check your thrift store for little bits and bobs. So I always see um, unused art supplies and little small toys, little figures, little um, box cars, uh, magic cars, depending on the age, you can find little fun things to put in the goodie bag that is necessarily hit the garbage can in the next half hour. Um, and then my niece did this one, which was great, which was she wrote little thank you notes to her friends on seed paper and then gave away uh, seed bombs that she had made uh, with my sister-in-law. And I thought that was a really sweet and smart idea. Oh, we have another picture fail. Sorry about that. Um, and so I just wanted to end with this, which is don't worry worry about it if you can do the thing. If something is just not accessible to you or if it's causing you a lot of stress or, oh, it's not perfect, it's fine. We don't need a handful of people doing it perfectly. We need millions of people doing it imperfectly. Um, this is my favorite quote about sustainable living from Amory, uh, who's a wonderful lady. You should follow her. Um, but yeah, just do it. What you can do, you're not a multi billion dollar corporation, or you're just a parent wanting to do uh, their best for your kid, and that's why you're here. So, I appreciate you. Thanks for coming. All right, so, um, at this point, Mina, uh, folks can feel free to ask any questions that they have. And yeah, I'm back. Chat. <laughs> and, um, if Oof. you have questions, please put them in the QA. There's a button at the bottom of your Zoom there screen, and that's where I'm going to be uh, pulling questions from. Um, somebody asked right away uh, earlier when you're talking about the lids, what is silicone? And for me, like, why is that more sustainable than plastic? Than plastic? Yeah, that's a tricky one. Um, so plastic is made from um, oil, whereas silicone is made from, um, now I'm blanking. Um, it's not made from crude oil, but it is. it does have a similar look and feel to plastic. In some places, it's recyclable, but it's one of those where facilities exist issues. Um, and so, honestly, when it comes down to it on a day to day basis, it's kind of the same thing. It's just how it's made. Mm -hmm. um, plastic has been shown to leach more, especially into hot foods. Um, so, sort of go with caution there. Um, but if that's if that's what you have, that's what you have. Um, and then some silicones, I think, are, yes, thank you, Sati, that's what I was going for. <laughs> um, some are considered dishwasher safe. I, I don't put them in the dishwasher, but I do love the metal containers um, because they can go in the dishwasher to sanitize them, uh, especially if something's been forgotten in the lunchbox for a couple of, uh, a couple of days, which <laughs> sometimes happen. Yes. Um, uh, I just wanted to, I just see Lindsay's question really. Um, try vinegar in a diluted vinegar solution and see if that gets the, gets the taste out. Um, so yeah, you are cutting out a little bit. So I just want to make sure that people are hearing that. Oh, you sorry. Have to. No, it's not you. It's, I think it's just the Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> But Bethany was asking uh, what the nesting metal containers in the top left picture are. So like, can you talk about that a little bit? I did put a link mm -hmm. for you can serve in the chat as well. Okay, great. So let me just unpack them all here. And I missed on the small one, but that's okay. So I have two sets of these, one for each kid. So there is a smaller one that goes on top that's probably sitting in someone's backpack right now. Um, and so the large one is quite large. It's about that big around. And then the smaller one is perfect for things like yogurt, 
uh, and, and applesauce and those kinds of things. And I love the medium one for putting in muffins and bagels, things like that. And then when you put them away in your cupboard, they all fit inside each other. Uh, I think we've all, we're all familiar with the Tupperware cupboard just exploding everywhere. <laughs> so I like that these nest in with each other and then they don't take up that much space when they're not in use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you made an interesting comment earlier about it's okay if it's plastic. And is that because yeah. you use it for, you've been, you could have been using it for nine years? Yep. Um, using what you already have is always more um, sustainable than going out and buying something new just to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, I have, I keep all my takeout containers, um, you know, the black plastic ones, number one, because black plastic is not recyclable. Um, and the reason for that is simply because the sensors can't see it. Um, and so if you've got it, use it. Um, and I'm, I'm just careful not to put hot food in it, but they're awesome in the so I use them for things like that. Um, but if you already have like, you know, like the Glad or the Ziploc containers or whatever, use them. You know, mm -hmm. you don't need to, you don't have to go buy something new if it's, if it's unnecessary. So shop your kitchen first. And if it's really not going to work for your little one going to school, then it's also fine to buy something. So like I said, this one's been in use for nine years. You, you buy it for life. Um, <laughs> yeah, the metal ones, you buy it for life. Um, you might be like, oh God, that's like $25. Um, but you're never throwing it out. Mm -hmm. You're going to use it 180 school days a year for, we go for 14 years here. Um, yeah. Oh yes, Bethany, I see you saying, I actually wash and reuse my baggies. Same. Mm -hmm. um, my Ziploc bags have been through it, uh, but they're still perfectly good. And I'm going to keep using them until they are no longer usable. Mm -hmm. So Bethany yeah. said about the, the nesting ones, it was actually the rectangular ones with handles that she wanted to know about where you get those. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So oh, um, those are from Kind Humans. Oh, okay. I can type that in the chat for you, Bethany. That one's from Kind Humans. Um, and I really like also um, Ikea has come out with a really great line of reusables and they also have it. It's a circular, uh, it's called a tiffin, the ones that nest and have the little clip on the top. And then they also have really excellent sandwich containers and um, the thermos as well at a pretty accessible price. So I, I really love what Ikea has come out with just in the last year or two for those little, little containers. <laughs> yeah. When I started purchasing, there wasn't a lot of choice. And now there's a plethora of choice. So navigating it can be tricky. Yeah. Right. Because we're buyers, we're consumers. So we're always like, oh, let's buy yes. that. That's the newest thing. Um, what Kate asked, what is the box one called? Was that in your presentation? Sorry, the certificate. Sorry, Mina, can you just repeat that? What is the box one called? I'm not sure what that means, Kate. Oh, what is the metal box? Oh, it's like a tippin. It's like a, it's a, yes. Yeah. Which is funny. Yeah. So it's, it kind of had two levels and then there was an insert in between. And then the bottom level had like a click so that it all stayed together. Mm -hmm. I will say that I do really like this container. This is, oh, sorry. The, this is the one with the four across, but when you drop it, the lid is going to get a bit warped. <laughs> um, and so this one doesn't have the clamps, which means I end up putting an elastic band around it. It's not a big deal at all. It's just something to think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and somebody uses the bento box. Yeah. Um, the bent goes are great. Yeah. Um, I'm having trouble keeping track of what of your questions and are your comments. So if you could put your questions in the Q&A, that would be really helpful to me. Um, so... And you said that the rectangular box is from Kind Humans, right? Yes. Yeah. The one that was in the picture is from Kind Humans. Oh, um, they also have a really great like lunch bag, like the thing, like the lunch box, the lunch bag um, that's insulated and that's made in a, in a responsible way. So they've got some great stuff there too. Mm -hmm. um, this is yeah. an interesting comment from uh, Summer about um, that women tend to do more plastic reducing and what, what can we do to get the guys to like fall into this, fall into line? Yeah. 
there was a there was an article that came out about this a couple of years ago that um, like of the men that they surveyed, they thought that like environmentally friendly behaviors were seen as less masculine. Mm. But I will say that I was leaving a store the other day that has like the e, e-, e- chargers for the front. And there was a Ford F-150 plugged in. <laughs> so I was happy to see that. And um, that's, you know, in terms of like masculinity and, and, and eco things. As for other reasons, I think that we're still very much um, in a place in society where women make all of or at least most of the purchasing decisions for the household, um, as far as like household products and food go. And so we're the ones that are on the front lines of that. We're probably the primary caregivers as well, packing the lunches and that sort of thing. And so it's much more on our radar. And mm-hmm. um, so it is what it is. And I will say that like, my husband is pretty good with all this. I was like, we're doing this now. Okay. Um, I didn't get much pushback on that, but he's become our secondhand wizard. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's all about Facebook marketplace. We have an app here called Kijiji, which is another secondhand selling app, um, here in Canada. And, uh, um, he, he's, uh, it's what he can find on there. Every brick of bills is from Kijiji. Uh, our pizza oven is from Kijiji, just our stove. We just recently went to an induction stove and snagged a great stove at a great price just from someone who was redoing their kitchen. Um, so we, we were able to snag that, but he's always, he's always on the lookout. So that's what he's good at. That's what he enjoys. And, and I'm more into the practical day-to-day things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there, um, something like Kijiji? I know you're in Toronto. So is there something you yes. know, near us like, or in-, in mass? Yeah. Um, I think, um, buy nothing is a lot, uh, uh, more prevalent in the States. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a buy nothing group here. It's called something else, but the buy nothing project especially if you live closer to an urban area um, is is really great for that um, it's also great for getting rid of things um, yeah you know not getting rid of them but like I had a I had a pot we got our new induction um, stove and aluminum can pot won't work on it it has to be like a steel pot and I was like well here you go buy nothing group and someone claimed it within literally one minute and came and picked it up later that afternoon. So I'm not dumping it at the thrift store. I know it's going to stay in use. I'm happy to pass it along. Yeah. Do you oh, put- the brand for the stove. I'm not sure what, what brand it is, but it's an induction um, stove top. So it's like a glass top stove, but it uses like magnets and sorcery. I don't really understand how it works, uh, but we got rid of our gas stove to, to get the induction electric range. And I love it. Um, Lindsay asked, did you, do you put, is it okay to put metal in the dishwasher? Yep. Yep. Your cutlery is going in there. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's, it's true. It's totally fine. Their dishwasher safe. Yep. Yep. And she also asks, says, as the water bottles improve and bottle trends change all the time. So how do you not navigate uh, that? <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw a reel on this recently that like, water bottle or the new disposable because <laughs> uh, it's the yeti or it's the hydro flask or i think we're on like stanley's now i don't know um i'm still using a water bottle i had in university in the 90s like mm-hmm. it's been through the war and it looks like it but it still holds water um so but no you're absolutely right the water bottle thing is out of control get the one that's going to work for you and guard it with your life <laughs> Yes, I yeah. You might I, do, I will it. say I, all the time. Yeah, I do. I do um, recommend getting an insulated one now, um, just to keep your water cold in the summer, and then you can also use it for hot beverages. So now you only need one thing instead of two, because it can also function as your coffee mug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Swathi had a question. She's certified zero waste advisor, but wondering if there's any further Yay. specialization for kids. For kids, um, again, I'm not sure in mass, but I'll give you something that we have here and then you can look around for something like that. So we have an organization here called Eco Schools Canada. Um, it is a not-for-profit, but it helps to um, have schools and like kids form like an eco club, like with a teacher and it has um, tiers of how like green your school is and the kids work toward that certification to have their school certified. Um, and so the kids get to go through the learning and 
set up the school garden or the composting program or empty the recycle boxes or, or whatever it is. But um, I'll just pop that in the chat really quickly. It's called Eco Schools mm -hmm. Canada. Um, so you can take a look at that. Um, that's a really cool organization. And another one it's called here, I'll just give this one as an Ontario too. It's called Natural Curiosity. Curio I don't know if it has certifications, but they um, approach um, children's education from an Indigenous learning perspective. Um, and so their programs are really cool. Mm -hmm. cool. Um, before we started, you had sent a bunch of... Um... Not, a, not sure if it's a certification, but they're really great learning programs. Oh, okay. Um, before we'd started, you had sent me a bunch of... Oh, all the links that I peppered the chat with? <laughs> yeah, no, it was good with blog posts, which I will send out after after the session. Yeah. But um, I did want to sure. dig in a little bit into presence. Like, um, no, first sure. I want to ask about wrapping paper. <laughs> okay. Is Wrapping paper is not recyclable. No, because it's... But, so... Um, it depends on what it looks like, um, but if it is shiny in any way or if it's printed, so pretty much all wrapping paper, it's actually coated in plastic and it's not recyclable. Mm -hmm. um, now you might say, well, I put it in my blue bin and they take it. They take everything that's in your blue bin, um, but it's not actually recycled. So um, either use what you've already got till it's gone, or if you're really keen to do this holiday, season towards something eco-friendly um, which I also have a blog post about and um, then you can so I have um, just plain brown craft paper just from the post office or um, the packing paper that comes um, with your deliveries and um, so we have that and the kids can color on it or you can draw a picture if you're artistic whatever it is wrap it up with some cute twine put a twig in it it looks beautiful um, or I use cloth so I just went to the thrift store and got fabric remnants. You know, there's always random fabric by the sheets and stuff. Um, and I cut that into different size squares and just watched a couple of YouTube tutorials to tie things up. And people are so careful when they're opening that present and then they fold it up and they give it back to me. Mm -hmm. And so now within our family, my in-laws, my sister-in-law, we have like the traveling cloth wrapping so it'll get sent to her and then it gets sent back to us with the kids birthday presents and, and, and things like, like that so um yeah definitely use old clothes if you have a cute plaid shirt you can also do um like silk scarves from the thrift store and make that be part of the present um so there's lots of great youtube tutorials on how to wrap wine bottles like that uh, it's called furushiki it's a japanese art of wrapping and it's really cool and it's like just transformed the way that that we give gifts yeah. and folks love it. So mm. it's even when you give a gift to a neighborhood kid, like it ends up back in our mailbox. So it's also sending that sort of a message to the people that you're gifting to without you having to be like a tree hugger about it. Mm -hmm. You're communicating without words and mm. it, it always looks pretty. So yeah, old ribbons, all of that kind of stuff. Like, I think we all have as much wrapping stuff as we're ever going to need. Oh, and of course, if you're a mom, you know about the secret underground gift bag we're using. <laughs> um, are we just, you get the bags, like this Superman bag going right out the door because um, it's still perfectly usable. So, but I have found that like my mother-in-law will now bring like a paper bag, um, you know, like they notice and, and they'll, they'll make, They'll make their own changes without you having to say a word. So uh, with the holidays coming up, keep that in mind. Look in, look in your fabric remnant area, especially for like plaids and um, things like that. 10 out of 10. I've, that's one of my favorite swaps I've ever made. We're actually having a program in December on making your own wrapping paper. Same thing. We're taking old oh, paper cool. bags and decorating yep. them. But the question is, if we decorate them, are they still yep. recyclable? Yes. Like if you're just using crayons or pen or something like that, as long as it's on that like craft paper or um, not wrapping paper, but like, you know, the wrapping paper that comes in the box. Mm -hmm. I have a little tip for that too. So you'll say, um, I noticed that it can get all wrinkled, you know, and you're like, oh, I don't want to use that. No, no. Wrinkle it more, like crush it, crush it, crush it, crush it. And then when you smooth it out, um, it's very soft mm -hmm. and it looks really cool. Um, I th I've got a reel on it ages ago, but it looks really cool. Um, and it, it kind of gets like, like leather. It's hard to explain, but 
crush it up more, tie it up. It's really cool. It's a, it's a cool look. And then it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like garbage, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, so several people said that they do give books um, for gifts. And I, and um, yeah. I have to tell you, as a local library, you can get books very, very cheap from the library, you know, from the front yes. of the library. 50 cents, a buck, two bucks um, to just share that people donate them, people buy them and they become yep. wonderful, wonderful gifts to people. So yeah. use your local- Love your library. <laughs> That's right. Um, so in terms of the goodie bag though, you mm -hmm. said, I don't think that that's controversial at all. I think most parents would uh, would get that <laughs> it's become a thing. So I, I didn't find that controversial, but um, yeah. do you, are have you always been comfortable giving kids stuff in glass jars? Well, I hand it to their parents or their person that comes to pick them up. That being said, I'm also a big canner. So then I was like, I got to keep these jars. Mm -hmm. I need these jars. So um, we started getting um, just at the dollar store, just like the little paper bags. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we would just put stickers on them or they would write their friends' names. Like, thank you for coming. Love, love Malcolm or whatever. They would write those on there. Um, and so they're really easy or put a sticker on it that can easily be peeled off. Um, something like that. But there's lots of workarounds. You can also just get little plain cardboard boxes, like those little cupcake boxes you can get craft paper ones and they're like 90 cents we did that for the the last birthday party that we had mm -hmm. as far as getting goodie bags at other people's parties I've always just let the kids decide if they want to take them or not I don't want to say like no you can't have that because we don't use plastic like I just don't really think that's fair mm -hmm. so I'm like yeah you can take it if you want to they always take it uh, <laughs> and that's fine so um, we can only do what we can do um, and I give them the choice and um, they always take it. So <laughs> it is what it is. They're kids, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They want the candy. I get it. But yeah, of course. I'm like, yeah, it's totally up to you. Um, and for them, it's kind of where they can go crazy and drink the juice box. And um, same with the granola bars at soccer. Like they always take them. It's fine. <laughs> it's In the grand scheme of things, it's totally fine. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You live in the yeah. world, right? It, you live in the world. And like I mentioned earlier, you are not a multi-billion dollar corporation. So just do what you can do. Um, in, in the last time, the initiative um, to get involved in. Um, and I mean, that's something that you can do with your kids too. But there, it's as simple as attending the next um, climate march. Uh, together. So ours here in Toronto is September 16th. There's probably one near you. Um, join your um, local Fridays for Future. So I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, that's um, the organization that Greta started, the Friday School Strike. Um, so you can check them out. They are usually involved with the climate strikes that typically happen on Saturdays. So like I said, ours is coming up here in Toronto on September 16th, uh, which is two Saturdays from now. Um, so just check that out. Um, it's if you're it's a great first protest for kids to go to because the vibe is immaculate. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good way to get them to understand, um, you know, civil disobedience uh, in a way that that we need because it's it's our survival. So mm -hmm. it's a way, way to introduce them to the political uh, without being scared. Mm -hmm. um, and have them become like engaged citizens and, you know, start, start hammering your mayor, start, um, you know, getting in touch with your congressperson or your senator, or whomever it is, uh, and let them know how you feel. So I'm pretty sure that my member of parliament uh, has me blocked at this point, <laughs> um, but maybe she shouldn't be selling off public lands. So <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. And in our area, we're having, I, I think it's global, but climate week in, a, in, in it's around the end of September. So there'll be a lot of activity mm -hmm. around that, which we're looking forward to. Um, I don't see any more questions. So yeah, Sarah, I just true. want to say thank you. Thank you so much for doing this again. And for, you know, thank sharing you. so many ideas. And like, I am always inspired after I speak to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, the, uh, your audiences have been wonderful. After my last talk, um, someone emailed me. And that just made everyone.
worth it. So I just, I really appreciate when folks get in touch with me and definitely shoot me an email or um, send me an, an Instagram on DM. Any question that pops into your head, I'm always happy to chat. Excellent. And it's true. She is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you everyone in the chat. Yeah. Right. Good night, everybody. Thank, Thank you so much, much Mina. Yep. Bye. Bye. Thank you.